OK, let's start with Gareth Bale's return to Tottenham. Cavi, this has moved quickly since you gave us that update on Tuesday night. Where are we as of 7 o'clock tonight? Look, Gareth Bale is about to become a Spurs player again. It will be a season-long loan. Uh, Spurs will be paying about 40% of his wages. And I think he will end up costing them somewhere between 50, 15 and £20 million pounds. Uh, over the course of the season in wages and also the fees involved with setting up the loan. As far as he himself is concerned, he feels that he has unfinished business at Spurs. He regards Spurs as being his home. He wants to come back, hopefully, uh, in the not-too-distant future, play in front of those Spurs fans again at their magnificent new stadium. The talks are progressing well, and I think he is going to become a Spurs player again very, very soon. It's an interesting theme of this week because uh, football fans seem to have been getting what they've wanted. We had Aston Villa fans getting Jack Grealish signing a new contract. Arsenal fans getting uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang signing a new contract. Uh, we had Thiago, the player Liverpool fans wanted. He's about to become a Liverpool player again. And also Gareth Bale, incredibly, about to become a Spurs player again. I suppose... All we need now, if you're a Manchester United fan, is for United to sign Jadon Sancho and then everyone will be happy. Much more to come on Manchester United, much more to come on Thiago, but let's stick with Bale. Ben Ransom has been covering this transfer and the reaction in Madrid. It's been an eventful day for Gareth Bale. There were some five or six local media crews joining us here this morning. No one expected to see him turn up here at the Real Madrid training ground, but at around quarter past ten, he did just that, gave us a little wave as he went through the gate looking very cheerful and we do believe now he's been through the gate for the final time. Gareth Bale was inside for around three and a half hours. We know he did some training alone in the gym. We also know today that he's begun the first part of his Tottenham medical as he closes in on that move. We know Gareth Bale, seven years he's been at Real Madrid, seven years where he's won plenty of trophies. He arrived as the most expensive player on the planet. So he's built some strong relationships inside the Real Madrid dressing room, even if sometimes from the outside, the media and the fans have painted him as an unpopular figure. He would have said his final goodbyes today. We saw him depart the Real Madrid training grounds and we expect to next see him on a plane to London as he finalises that move to Tottenham. A season-long loan, ready to be a Spurs player once again. So from Madrid to Enfield, Paul Gilmore has this update from Tottenham's training ground. Seven years after driving away from this training ground, Gareth Bale is on the verge of becoming a Tottenham Hotspur player once more. He is expected here in Enfield on Friday to complete the deal, to finalise the deal and crucially to sign a contract. Uh, Gareth Bale and the Real Madrid left-back Sergio Regulon expected in London on a private jet to complete their moves. Uh, whether they'll be available ahead of this weekend, well, they've got Spurs have got until midday on Friday uh, to sanction those moves if they want to come into contention. Attention. But there are the wider issues around Gareth Bale and his fitness and his match fitness to be specific, uh, whether he'll be available uh, for this weekend. But they're certainly not ruling it out uh, at this point. But what is clear, the pair um, are well advanced in these discussions and are due in London on Friday. So, Dermish, uh, we heard from Paul there that that's one left back on the way in. Where does that leave Danny Rose? Look, as far as Danny Rose is concerned, he wasn't actually in Tottenham's plans, you'd have to say, even before the Regulon issue took momentum. Now, it's clear Tottenham Hotspur do want Danny Rose out. They haven't given him a squad number. I think Danny Rose found out when it was published on, on the website and when we found out is when he found out he didn't, wasn't given that number three shirt. Now, look, the other issue is that Rose has entered the final year of his contract. Tottenham have been in talks with Genoa, but the finances involved make it very difficult for Genoa to be able to afford Danny Rose's wages. Now, our colleagues at Sky in Italy, they're reporting it is Tottenham who are pushing this deal more than Genoa. Now, you'll remember last week, the Tottenham boss, Jose Mourinho, in his news conference, said Genoa would be getting a fantastic player if they were to sign Danny Rose almost pushing Danny Rose towards the club. There's another issue as well, because with Regalon's imminent arrival, Ryan Sessegnon, he could also leave on loan during this transfer window, because with Regalon arriving, they'd have a number of left-backs 
most of who wouldn't play, Ben Davis and Regalon, you'd have to say, would be fighting out for that place. Danny Rose, Ryan Sessegnon, surplus to requirements, perhaps. The other line to bring you about the squad numbers, we heard Paul Gilmore talking about it there. I've mentioned it. Rose's number three is no longer um, for Rose. It is available. The number 16 is also vacant at Tottenham Hotspur as well. And significantly... The first two numbers that Gareth Bale wore at Tottenham Hotspur were the number three and the number 16. That October the 5th deadline is rapidly approaching for international deals between Premier League clubs and European clubs. A lot of Tottenham fans all asking the same thing tonight to us, Darmish. How is that search for a striker in terms of what, what do we know? Yeah, it's interesting because we've all we were talking about pre-Bale was would Tottenham be signing another striker? And the question now is, now with Bale arriving, does that mean Tottenham aren't going to be in the market for a striker? We're told it's not been ruled out. Of course, the arrivals of Bale and the accompanying wages for Bale and the transfer fee for Regulon and the wages for Regulon would impact on potential outlays for other transfers. But Tottenham's search for a striker, look, this is not new. We've been talking about a backup to Harry Kane or someone who could play alongside Harry Kane for the last two, three, four, five, six transfer windows. And each time Tottenham, aside of the time that they brought in uh, Fernando Llorente, they brought in Vincent Janssen, hasn't really worked out. Llorente, to a certain extent, did. Janssen simply didn't. So they want to be careful about who they bring in, the type of player that they bring in, are they going to get a player who is going to be satisfied to be back up to Harry Kane? Jose Mourinho has said he doesn't want to play with that attitude. He wants a player to come in and say, I can get in to the team. There were a number of names being mentioned with Tottenham striker search. One of them was Alexander Sorloth. Some would say, quite surprisingly, he was on loan from Crystal Palace to Trasbon Spore. And now we understand that he's on his way to RB Leipzig. They've been interested in him for a couple of windows. The total cost will be about £20 million, of which £7 million will go to Crystal Palace. The rest will go to Trabs von Spohr. It's a long list of striker targets for Tottenham. Sorloth doesn't look like he's on that list anymore.